Well, uh, good morning. Welcome to another lesson on social media regulations and uh, why we are doing it as you know that in the question in CIS, when examiner would be expecting us to shed some light on different sort of regulations, uh, obviously there will be a question on and different kind of situations. So it will be great if you will talk about film regulations as an example and game regulations and lastly, uh, you should be talking about a little bit of uh, social media regulations. So that is why it's important. And today we are going to move on to the new aspect that is why social media be regulated. Uh, since um, it was supposed to be freedom of speech, it was supposed to be free to access, people can have their own channels, people don't need approval from the world, and everybody should be given equal opportunity to to speak out and share this point of view. But uh, this freedom has raised some concern for government, for uh, social engineers, for uh, uh, which uh, and psychologists, sociologists, since there had been some issues like uh, mass shooting uh, at a mosque in New Zealand, Christchurch, and uh, the shooter was live on Facebook, and that is quite insensitive. Similarly, you know, uh, some terrorist organizations are having their own uh, social media campaigns. Similarly, uh, you know, malpractices in elections, manipulations of data and opinion. So uh, these kind of events have, you know, just brought a conclusion that there should be some check and balance in social media without uh, violating the freedom of expression of the general people. Uh, obviously, these regulations are uh, said to be. Uh, for the uh, general public's benefit and we would explore uh, different aspects and in the examination we would not be giving our opinion rather we would be talking about both sides and in the end we may uh, conclude by giving our own point of view uh, but we have to be very expressive about it so why should social media be regulated social media companies must be accountable to the democracies that make their business possible obviously uh, Britain, they have their own rules, US have their own rules, France, European Union, Middle East. So they have to align themselves if they want their web pages or, or services to be accessible for those regions and for the general public in general. So they should be accountable according to this document. And obviously there are a lot of fake things. There are a few fact things, fact-based things. So they should be, uh, you know, uh, clear difference between that and governments, uh, uh, are holding accountable to social media companies for whereas they claim that social media companies believe that they are just providing platform it's up to the users whether they properly use it or misuse it and they believe that they are not responsible however they are so major technology companies I mean government believe that they are actually so uh, major technology companies such as Google, Facebook, Twitter, Snap means, you know, Snapchat owners and others define that information ecosystem in m much of the world, hardly regulated and hardly accountable. Uh, these companies are completely transforming the public sphere. First of all, that is why, because they are given, giving freedom to the people now, uh, their voice is being heard now. While these platforms present new opportunities to connect people around the world, they also create attack surfaces for bad actors that wish to spread misinformation, encourage terrorism, engage in online harassment, steal personal data, restrict free speech, and suppress dissent. Well, the age of unregulated social media must end now, but bad regulation could co cause its own problems. Obviously, if regulations would be imposed without considering all the possible aspects. So either it will suppress freedom of expression or uh, it may, you know, make people feel uh, unheard, you can say, or if they do not regulate it, so uh, the whole problem will go on where people would be uh, allowed to uh, damage somebody's reputation or uh, defame or religion like Islamophobia, uh, or maybe, you know, uh, without any evidence, uh, you know, uh, doing bad things or maybe terrorism and uh, obviously, especially in elections campaigns. So there should be something, uh, uh, the, the purpose behind these regulations is to stop fake 
news, fake information, and such kind of activities that may damage an individual or general population as a whole. So that is why the governments and social engineers are saying that the age of unregulated social media must end and bad but bad regulations should also would also uh, cause a lot of problems so now is the time to have these kind of discussions before we end up with misguided rules and before it's too late across the country or university campuses at industry conferences and other public forums we are generally need to frame and debate these issues obviously deb when we debate different kind of aspects gets on the surface and then keeping those aspects in mind uh, you know better solutions uh, comes to the surface. So here are, there are three areas in this handout to explore. Greater transparency to governments and independent researchers. Means that social media and technology companies and giants, their businesses and business models should not be kept hidden anymore from the governments as well as researchers. Independent researcher means you and me can be an independent researcher. We should be able to access or we should be granted access to their model of working. How do they get our data? How do they keep it safe? How do they exchange it with or share it with marketers, marketing agencies? And how our privacy is, uh, uh, is possibly going in wrong hands? All these kinds of should, the information should be kept public for people to know and research about. So right now the technology companies operate with little scrutiny. I mean, uh, if you talk about Facebook, which is one of the biggest social media company in the world, uh, here Mark Zuckerberg, it has the highest number of stakes in the company shares. And in other words, he's the boss and he decides what to be done with the data and privacy of billions of people in the world. So it means that there is little scrutiny there. It is crucial that there is more transparency or there should be more transparency both to government and independent researchers who can help society to understand the consequences of these vast new communication platforms. This means access to data and to the systems. This is complicated, but it is necessary now if we are to ensure these technologies are at the very least a net benefit to society going forward. Otherwise, they will be banned by the governments, obviously. Conversations should center around how to create frameworks and mechanisms that provide for such scrutiny. University researchers, for instance, can serve as powerful partners to governments and technology companies in understanding these platforms and how society is misusing them and how they can better use them. So first of all, uh, today's discussion should be that there should be transparency now. The business model should not be hidden Okay, number two, accountability and transparency to citizens. Obviously, government, democracy means government of the people and from the people. Means that those representatives come from the people by, you know, going into elections. They are chosen by the people and their all policies should be in the favor of the people. So similarly, accountability, transparency should be towards the citizens. Citizens need to know how these platforms operate and how they shape user experiences and what the companies are doing with user data. Further, citizens should have the right to know when the technology companies make a mistake or when breaches occur, such as Russian election interference campaign in 2016 or the recently announced theft of Facebook user data by Cambridge Analytica. I'm sure you have read or went through with such kind of news and again and again on different kind of uh, uh, media channels and even BBC and CNN that Facebook uh, sold data of their users to Cambridge Analytica. It's an analysis company uh, which uh, do massive kinds of analysis on users' data, their browsing habits, their purchasing habits and stuff like that, their interests, their hobbies, their locations and then they share with their partners, marketing companies, and even with other governments. And uh, that is raising a red flag, actually. How to regulate such disclosures and what should be required in the form of robust customer protection or consumer protection in an area ripe of this, uh, for the discussion? So actually, uh, if, I, if you want to know, uh, an undercover uh, journalist uh, went to Cambridge Analytica to 
and he wanted to pay the money to get users data and the representative the official representative of Cambridge Analytica uh, in that discussion the hidden cam was there disclosed that they have terms and partnership with the Facebook and they can buy data from Facebook and uh, the Cambridge Analytica person was ready to sell that data to even to Russia and other uh, countries of the world who, uh, whom US disliked and stuff like that. So that is why it raised red flag and then later on Facebook uh, co-founder Mark Zuckerberg had to go to US court and Senate and he was answerable and later they were they found guilty. They were found guilty and they were charged or fined a hefty amount of money in millions of dollars. So this is real, real actually. Number three, responsibility for addressing social costs. Facebook market cap, for instance, isn't far from the Exxon Mobil. Exxon Mobil is the world's largest, I'm not saying one of the largest, it's largest crude oil and oil and fuel uh, processing company. Uh, it's a huge, and any company, and Facebook, is the market cap is about to reach there. It means that they are going to cross and going to be more bigger company than Exxon Noble who are in the industry for decades. Any company that has reached such scale produces some form of pollution or other negative social cost. Obviously, uh, if you talk about conventional industries, so if an uh, industry is making laptop or some, uh, even some, uh, uh, gadgets who are good for the society but still they would release some pollution and some negative thing in the environment so same goes to Facebook if they claim that they are doing good with the society they have brought people closer and families closer friends closer and stuff like that uh, now social interactions are more possible being without moving and traveling and being there you know in their own spaces and comfort zones but still they a company at such a larger scale like Facebook, they produce some form of pollution or negative social cause. Often regulators seek to make industry pay for it. While Google and Facebook have reached, have each invested in some initiatives designed to address these kinds of uh, externalities, uh, externalities uh, particularly their impact on news media, clearly much more is needed. Government should explore the appropriate levy, levy means taxes, or penalties to place on these technology companies and what type of activities to finance to remediate a negative social cost. Social cost means like people are getting unsocial because of social media. They are, they are, they are, the time spent on cell phone and devices is growing and the social interaction with living beings, human beings, their family members is reducing the health is being compromised. So all these negative factors and aspects, which is being highlighted by sociologists, psychologists, doctors for the quite many years, but still these companies had been disowning that they have nothing to do with, with such kind of health issues or, or issues. But now governments are planning to uh, add some responsibility on these companies and, and they have to pay financially. Maybe they would be sponsoring parks, uh, with no Wi-Fi at all, or maybe with jammers there, so that the customers, the consumers who may not be able to access their services in the park, which they have sponsored to help them lead a healthy life or to live at least a balanced life, you can say. Similarly, there are certain projects which they are encouraged to sponsor uh, so that people could get the real essence of social media and so on. So. This brings end to this handout and to this discussion to this video and I'm sure that this information would also be helpful for you to trigger a thinking process about social media and their criticalities, their different aspects and you would be able to better research online now and you would understand more uh, online based upon these handouts and similarly if you would have to write the crux of this handout in exam, it would be very beneficial. More handouts and more discussion is coming up your way. Till then. Have a nice day. Take care. Allah Hafiz.